All of Enzo's body and facial motion performances were cleaned and fine-tuned entirely in Unreal using the built-in animation tools combined with the MetaHuman control rigs. This allowed me to edit my motion capture data directly in the engine, so there was no need to use any external DCCs. There is a great video from Unreal Fest featuring Solutions Architect Tony Bowren and Lead Technical Animator Frederick Nielsen showcasing the new animation tools and updates in 5.1, including new editor interaction modes, hotkeys, and animation constraint tools. And I've linked this video in the description. With Enzo's body and facial performances captured simultaneously and being the same length, with the body captured at 240Hz and the face at 60, using the additional marker of a clap and blink, it was easy to sync these up in sequencer without using timecode. By baking the body performance to the control rig, I was able to see the curves in the curve editor, and thanks to the HD reprocessing Xsense does, all of the curves were very smooth. I made offsets using the curves for certain parts of the body, such as the clavicles. By changing the axis snapping to Y only, I could select all of the curves for the pitch of these controls and move them in order to adjust the clavicles. After making offsets, I used an additive backward solver to add on top of the existing animation by creating an additive layer. And I recommend you always create a key at the start and end of the animation layer before you start modifying controls. Using the head control as an example, I create a key before I want to make a change, and a key in the area after the adjustment I'm going to make. Somewhere in between, I want to modify the role of the head control. I create a key by pressing the middle mouse button, and with the Y axis snapping on, I can modify the role. Once I finish with all of the changes I want to make, I bake this to an animation sequence in order to create a brand new animation file with all of the changes that I've made. For this foot scene, I animated the metahuman toes for the first time and used the new foot controls by using an additive backward solver. I found it helpful to slow the animation using the time dilation track and also viewing this from different angles. Using the new foot controls, I had more flexibility in positioning the feet and toes throughout the animation. And for each individual toe, I created keys in the additive layer and inside of the curve editor, I modified the yaw. And I also used the foot IK for the left foot in order to keep it planted to the floor throughout the animation. And this is how I modified the fingertips for this performance. Let me walk you through this process as it was very simple. In the additive layer and using the curve editor, with the yaw of the fingertips selected, I went through the animation and created keys. And by changing the axis snapping to Y only, when I move these keys, I'm able to move only the yaw of the fingertips. I'm going to delete these keys over here and show you. By pressing the middle mouse button, I create a key and adjust the fingertip. Over here I wanted the fingertips to stay on the skin throughout the animation. And I found it helpful to use several cameras to view the fingertip positioning as I went through this. Now I recently got the new Xsense Meta Gloves by Manus, which give you high fidelity finger tracking by using a biomechanical model that takes into account the fingertip positioning. I tested these by recapturing Enzo's hand performance as the original data was captured with the Prime 2 gloves. With these gloves, I was able to get extremely accurate finger data. I compared the curves of the fingertips for the Meta gloves and the Prime 2 gloves, and we can see there is a lot more range of motion in the fingertips with the Meta gloves. These gloves captured my finger movements precisely, and had I used these instead of the Prime 2 gloves, I would not have had to spend as much time modifying the fingertips for this performance. But I was grateful to have used the Prime 2 gloves, as having to animate the hands and fingers manually would have taken a significantly longer time. For Enzo's facial motion performances, I was very happy with the data I captured using the Mark IV HMC. For the dialogue that was cleaned and fine-tuned with the face control rig, instead of showing you what the raw performance looked like that I streamed in and recorded in real time, I want to show you what the raw dialogue performance looks like that I brought in using the recently released Facewear portal that utilizes machine learning neural net processing and captures frame accurate facial movement. To use this inside of Facewear's web-based cloud computing platform, I import the Mark IV HMC recording, change the tracking model to headcam, change the rotation to 90, and import a calibration frame. 
and in less than two minutes the data has been processed. All I need to do now is download the JSON file. I'm also going to download this video file as this is going to give me a preview of what is being tracked. And what is amazing is that this is tracking the upper and lower teeth for more precise jaw positioning. By comparing the portal tracking to the facewear studio tracking, we can see the portal tracking is more accurate, especially in the mouth and eye area. To get the data into Unreal, I've created a level sequence and added Enzo in here. And I've left everything at default, including the frame rate. I've changed this to Python, and I'm going to copy this script, which is looking at the JSON data and pointing towards the character script set up specific to the MetaHuman control rig. I'm going to paste it in here and hit enter. And all 38 expressions in a structure of 0 to 1 are being baked in Unreal on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. Once the data is imported, we can now see that the JSON data has been baked to the control rig. And if we take a closer look at the curves, we can see the curves look great. When comparing the real-time data that I fine-tuned using the face control rig, with this raw data from the portal, what stands out to me is how the eye and mouth tracking is incredibly accurate. And these were the main areas that I spent time cleaning up and having to use motion effects in order to make offsets in FaceWare Studio. Had I used the portal data, I would have been able to focus on adding creative touches to the performance, and I would have completed this process significantly faster. To give you a better idea how the face control rig can be used in order to take that level of realism even further by adding details on top of the performance using an additive backward solver, for this breathing animation, I'm going to change the additive layer to inactive, and we can see what the raw data looks like beneath it. By changing this back to active, we can see what a difference these little details can make. Some of the controls I added on top of the performance were the jaw clench, the ears which would move whenever the jaw would open, the inhale exhale, the throat up and down which is activated during speech, the neck stretch to add tension for the muscles running up and down the neck, the mastoid contract which was activated whenever there was head movement, and during this fine-tuning process, I found it helpful to move the lights so that I could focus on specific parts of the face that I was working on. And a special thank you goes to Unreal Engine artist Max Warland for providing this MetaHuman lighting setup for this video. Some other useful controls were the suck blow controls to animate the breathing sequence, and I used these together with the nose controls to narrow and widen the nostrils, and then combine this with the nasal labial control so that they all went together with the inhale and exhale control. In order to time all of the controls for the breathing sequence, I had the control rig visible and set up multiple cameras, and then pinned those so I could visualize where I needed to create markers for the inhale and exhale controls based on the body movement. This was also helpful in locating where to keyframe the mastoid contract, which is activated during head movement. Once I was finished making the markers and creating keys, I would select the camera I was going to be working with and would lock that camera. And in order to get the control rig to follow the face with the body movement, I would select this follow head control and change its value to 1 in the additive layer and set a key. Using the markers, I was able to time the inhale, exhale, and created keys in these areas. And I also used this to include the throat up and down control and also utilize the swallow control, which is one big gulping motion. And for the pupils, depending on whether Enzo was looking at a bright or dim light, I keyframed the pupils so that they would constrict when the light was bright, and they would dilate when the light was dim. And this is the fine tuning I did with Enzo's facial performances. In the next videos, I will be sharing how Thomas Sackman created Enzo's textures and body morph by transferring them from the original character he created for his course on CG Circuit and how he brought those into Unreal.